thumbs up thank you they make a big difference to me right i can dump that piece of paper now what else have i got going here uh the image it's really important to be looking at the image the whole time while you're painting i find if i go wrong it's because i'm working out of my head and not referring to the image and um working out of your head is is good but uh, uh, when you're painting something that where you want those eyes and head to look reasonably convincing, then working, referring to the image is really, really important. So last week we got a certain way through. I'm just going to put a piece of paper under so I don't accidentally put green on my. So we're definitely doing part two today. Last week we already did the pros and cons of salt and we talked about how to remove it. I started on brushes. I pretty much talked about the um the wisp brush, and I've also got with me other little tiny brushes. I've also got today a flat brush because I'm going to be doing a little bit of removing uh, where I want to shift some of the dark paint, um, particularly here and here, and I might want to lift a little bit. So I've got a little flat brush for that. So that's the brushes. I mentioned gouache last week as well, so we've covered that. And I particularly mentioned about gouache and how it kills your transparency so yeah sure it's awesome to use at the end when you've lost your whites but it also kills the um, beautiful white of the paper that comes up hi Deb thanks for joining us I'm going to start today with um, the eyes and do a little more glazing. We did a little bit of glazing. We put in a layer of yellow. I did aureole in yellow, but a whole range of yellows will work nicely for layer number one. And then we glazed it with a little bit of a red. I can't quite remember which red. I, I have um, a little spot on my palette. I'm just going to show you my palette. Oh, this is a tip I got from um, Gail, one of my students, and it is one of those little food lids and that has kept my palette beautifully in um, uh, dust free for the week. So I haven't uh, touched it since we last painted, which now is actually two weeks ago. Anyway, I just wanted to say about my reds, it's probably magenta, but it might be rose madder. It might be a little bit of a lizard and crimson. I'm using such a small amount of it. I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters which particularly which yellow it is because I'm going to warm it up, warm up the yellow with a little bit of red. So that's why I'm not specific about my um, reds. I kind of am dumping them all into the same little well. Uh, now that I've got it in my hand, I'm going to just activate all those colors from last week. And as I mentioned at the beginning of my um, chats up there, so hey, Alison, good morning. Um, I mentioned that I am still working with Burnt Sienna, Ultramarine Deep, um, a red that's probably magenta, and I've been using Oriole and Yellow. I love Oriole and Yellow. I tend to use it all the time. This well here is my mix of Ultramarine Deep plus Burnt Sienna. That's a darker mix. And in here, it's a lighter mix. So in fact, I'll add more water and keep the center well for a light, lovely brownie gray. And I'll keep this one here with the thicker mix. And then I've got dark brown, light brown. And we're making our own um, brown using Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine Deep. Right, so that's what I wanted to say about the glazing that I was using a red to glaze, but use any red that uh, you like or you have on your palette or you want to use up, that kind of thing. The other thing that I started to talk about last week was um, glazing for tone. I'm going to be, uh, I'm not going to be doing that this week. When it comes time to add tone to the body, so we want to be thinking about a light source. This is a good moment for light source thinking. I'm going to be imagining my light source comes from this direction. So generally, this half of the face, lighter. This half of the face, darker. Generally, this half of the head, lighter, and then gradually getting a little darker. Again, this part of the brow here will be a little darker, and that will be a little lighter. And the same will apply to the body. So I'm going to be adding more color 
to this side of the body and less color to that side of the body. So I'm just suggesting that the body has a fullness to it by using light tones and dark tones. And I'm not going to be into deep going into detail that this is where I'll be using the salt and I will do a little bit of salt up there. I was vacillating about the salt on the head. Um, just showing you my other one here. I did use it here. And at first I thought, oh, I don't like it. And then afterwards I changed my mind, as you do. And, you know, as you can, it's art. You can please yourself all the time. So I'm going to start with the glazing of the eyes. I'm going to cross off the tone because I've now talked about that. And the other thing I wanted to talk about were ellipses. And the reason I wanted to, or ellipses, I'm not sure. I should look that up. Uh, the reason I want to talk about that is because the owl's eye is a circle, but our eye is three-quarter, as in the owl's head is slightly on the side. So um, this means that these circles are going to be partly ellipses. So I'm just going to briefly chat about that. Here's a circle. And as soon as you turn it on the side, it begins to become an ellipse. So it's not an oval, it's an ellipse. Uh, that's the singular is ellipse. Um, so interesting that it's so similar to the word ellipsis, which is those three dots that you get, um, or when something has been ellipsed, something has been left out. This is quite a different meaning of the word. It's about a circle that has been turned on its side. And the further you turn it on the side, the more the ellipse um, flattens and more and more and more until eventually you can't see it. So I've got a couple of objects here, for example. You're looking at it, my jar, from the top and you get a circle. As I twist it, that is in that rim, just focusing completely only on the rim, that rim becomes an ellipse. And as I turn it and turn it and turn it, it's no longer a circle, it's ellipse. We know it's a circle in physical space, but as you turn it and you're drawing something, you need to understand that it becomes an ellipse. It's the sort of thing that we could spend the whole hour on. And it's a really brilliant concept in terms of drawing and painting because you might want to paint a jar and you're so unlikely to be looking at it from the top down. You're very likely to be viewing it from the side, particularly if you're painting a vase of flowers, which I do all the time. I'm going to get another object here. A, same thing. This is a champagne flute. From the top, this beautiful rim is a circle, and then as I turn it, it becomes an ellipse. And if I keep turning, 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 there is a point at which the circle disappears and it actually becomes a line. Um, so I need to apply this concept to the eyes because the owl's head is slightly turned. And we know the owl's head is slightly turned because this eye is partly obscured by the um, owl's brow. brow. Um, right. Any questions, any comments, say anything at all. People will be very interested in what you've got to um, day, got to, today, thank, got to say. Thanks, Linda. That's, that is really good to know. I don't like to bang on about stuff too much if you're all sitting there thinking, yeah, yeah, no one ellipses. But um, it's, it's a fundamental uh drawing skill in art that I use all the time. I love that I understand that. Uh, right, ellipse, getting rid of that. Next, yes, so the eyes. Oh, I think that's it for my list of things. Oh, the I've got my salt ready. I'm using table salt. I can dump that one. What else have I got under here? Oh, I did a little bit of research because I kept wondering was this an ear or not? And um, turns out it's not. So this is um, information from Buffalo Bill Center of the West. That's their um, icon up there. And they have the most amazing photo. I'm going to zoom in so you can see. It's a little bit hard to understand, but there's the eye and there's the ear. So the ear is... I'm going to zoom in on my photo, is hidden. And it is in there as 
The tuft, the these are called prominent ear tufts, these fluffy bits, and the ear is actually here. And these concentric circles amazingly help um, direct the sound to the um, ear of the owl. That's all I wanted to say about that one. And um, I wondered also whether or not they actually had uh, eyeball like us, because if you pop one of your eyeballs out of your head, it's literally a ball. Um, but they don't. They have, uh, they're very circular. What's not circular is the surrounding areas, but the eye itself is circular. Um, this skin and fur around it do um, vary a bit. This is from treehugger.com. That was also extraordinary information. The one I put on Facebook this morning uh, was a Wikipedia link to this insane photo, which is a close-up of an owl's eye, and it's from Wikipedia. I love Wikipedia. And um, as Karen commented on Facebook, you can see these incredibly tiny, I'll just go a little closer, incredible. Thank you, Natasha. Uh, incredibly tiny little eyelashes. It's, that's just amazing to see that they have it. You can see here that the eye, the center um, pupil is pretty round and the eyeball is pretty round, but it's kind of flat up there and that's what I am missing on mine here. I'm going to flatten the side of that eye over there. Uh, so that's on my Marion Chapman Artist Sydney Facebook page if you want to see that link or if you're interested in any of these, I could um, add those links um, to this YouTube, um, put them in the comments or something afterwards. So they do have ears. I mean, we knew they had ears, don't they, because they're incredible um, hunters. Um, oh, I think we're ready to paint. Eyes, ellipses. I've got my image and, oh, that's the other thing I wanted to say, that this is the image that we started with where we drew a grid. And that's the other way you can tell whether or not you're dealing with a circle. And um, because we drew little squares, a circle is a perfect circle if it sits within the square. And you can see it's pretty circular, but um, not perfectly a circle. And I really need to adjust that on these eyes. They're a little too circular, so I'm going to start by adjusting them. That's where I'm going to start today. I'm going to fix up the eyes and um, and then get the body done. I think I can get rid of those. Um, yeah, just thinking about... I use gator board. I love this stuff. Right, I'm going to zoom. No, I don't need to zoom out. You know I've got water. You've all got water. Um, I'm going to start. I've got my image right beside me. Oh, it's called a bill. It's not called a beak. The owl has a bill. And, yeah, I mentioned all that. I'm going to start here. I'm going to start with my flat brush. Perhaps I could put my water closer and then you'll be able to see me dipping out in and out yeah and I've got a towel here a tissue will work as well what I'm going to be doing is using this flat brush wetting it just move my painting so I don't splash on it removing the excess moisture and I'm not just removing I'm aligning those bristles so I get that lovely flat edge and I'm going to start by making this edge flat Oh, it's lifting brilliantly. That's that aureolin. Get rid of it. Realign my bristles. And I just want to subtly adjust the side of the eye. I'm just going to soft bring that out with the flat brush. I have to try not to put my hand in the place I'll, in, your <laughs> in your way. I'll do it that way. And then you can see better what I'm doing there, bringing it out. It's also a brilliant idea to look at it upside down. So if I, here's my owl, here's my image. If I look at this upside down, I can see it's straight 
and then this is all dark here. So I'm going to, with the same flat brush, um, add in this darkness here. I've got this soft in the centre of my palette, the light wash. I'll just show you. It's pale in tone. And I'm going to start with the pale and just push, add that little dark tone over there. And, and actually I'm adding a light tone. If I start light, I can correct it. Uh, that's pretty good. Do I need to also bring this dark up a little bit? So again, I'll go into that light mix and just ever so subtly get rid of some of that yellow. I'm covering the yellow and kind of flattening out the base of the eye. The yellow is moving into my dark surrounds and that's that's nice. The beauty of watercolour is that it moves. Okay, putting it back uh, in position. I need to move the water, I'm afraid. Okay, that I've flattened the side and changed the curve there. And then I can see that I just want a little subtle adjustment here where I'm going to add a little bit of dark. Okay, I'm going to turn it back this way because it is easy to hand. I'm a lefty and I'm just changing the painting so that I can, I just want to add a hint. I'll go into this thick brown. Oh, it's incredibly thick. Just removing the excess so that there is a tiny amount and it's on the edge. And I'm going to grab not grab, I'm going to place it there. I'm just reducing the amount of the yellow there and bring it out. Okay, tiny little adjustments to the eye to make that. Yeah, I think that is slightly better. Slightly. I'm just going to put them together to have another look. Is, yeah, and then I'm going to get my little... Um, Liner brush, it's a size for Richardson. Wet it, remove excess moisture. I don't want any drips. And I'm going to tickle the edge of where I've added the dark brown and just tickle it so that there's a soft join. The eye is all softness. I'm just tickling it out. Oh, I did drip there. Just grab a tissue and get rid of the drip uh, on the head. Probably doesn't matter, but if I get rid of it, I can't smudge something into it. I think that's a little better. I could just adjust it a little more, but it's wet now. I'm going to leave that one and let it dry and go back. Um, later if I feel it needs more adjustment. Now, the other thing that I need to adjust is that the um, pupils don't match. So I'm going to reapply my yellow and then bring the black. When I say black, that's my mixture of Ultramarine Deep and Burnt Sienna. I'm calling it black. I'm making my own black. Love, love doing that. So I'm going to reapply the yellow. And I'll just use a lovely small one. This is my triple zero black gold. Um, wet it. I don't think I cleaned that properly. It was a little stiff, both jars. Then I'm going to zoom out so you can see what I'm doing now because I'm going to dip in and out of my palette. That's better. And now you can see the um, yellow. So there's a dirty yellow uh, there because I am often really messy like that. So I want to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of it with my bristle brush. That's my cheap bristle brush. Cheap <laughs> bristle brush. And that way I don't use my beautiful brushes because you do slowly uh, wear away at your... Um, the, your beautiful brushes. That's just natural wear and tear. I'm just grabbing a little bit of my aureole and it softens up beautifully. That's possibly the other reason why I love using aureole all the time. 
grabbing a bit of yellow. I'm reapplying the yellow, which technically is glazing, so that I can reapply my burnt sienna mix. So, and my goal is to get a soft edge. So back to my flat brush, which already has the, no, nah, that'll be too clumsy. I'm going to put it on with um, my little liner. So dip straight into the thick uh, version of, it's quite brown. If I add a little more blue, it'll go to the blacker side. A, you know, gray, which, oh, that's better. That's beautiful. I'll just give you a swatch of that one. Nice and dark, pretty much black. Can you see that? I'll take the shine off it and you can see how dark it is. That one back there. I'm going to turn it on an angle as, again. Put my image on the same angle. Now this is a little bit wet and I don't want the black to rush into it. I just want to expand the size of the pupil. So I'm going to apply and carefully move into the yellow, carefully. It will easily cover the yellow, so that's how I'm going to get that soft edge. And um, there is, in between the bright yellow of the iris, and then it gets quite dark brown before it hits the pupil, and that's what I'm attempting to replicate there by moving it softly. So it's moving quickly. I can see it doing little spidery things into the yellow. So I'm just going to um, not apply any more, just give it another minute to dry just that tiny bit more. Go back into the dark mix. I can do the bit up here. I'm just going to expand the iris up there because it pretty much goes off to nothing. And I'm going to cover it because that, yeah, that's correct. That comes up to that small. I'm just while I've got this lovely dark, I'm going to darken in here. A little bit of dry brush. I can I can soften that. A little bit of water. I don't really want dry brush there. Just softening that. Coming around this dark. Okay, I'm going to put it up. This is so worth spending the extra time on the eyes to get this part right. That's good. And it comes up a little higher here as well. So I'm going to turn it this way. This time, and I'm working over on that section just to bring up this part more dark gray to correct the eyes. Just bring that up. The um, pupil does actually bulge out a little more than the iris. So I could leave a little bit of a hard line there, just a little bit of a hard line. Have it completely soft on the bottom and hard on the top and if that looks all right I'll leave it as is. I'm just incorporating some of that dark into the center of the pupil. If I um, mix up the words pupil and iris please correct me because <laughs> once I'm painting I um, I uh, struggle, to <laughs> struggle to talk and paint at the same time particularly if I'm concentrating. I'm just going to correct that line Oh, there, that was a little wider than I wanted. Need to lift that off. Going back to my flat brush, I pretty much use a flat brush for corrections. I'm just, I've cleaned it off. I'm going to put it in clean water as well. Clean it off, wiping it on my towel, realign the bristles and wipe off, remove that. Put it on my towel, just remove it there. That's better. It's removed a little bit of the aureolin and made it quite light. 
I don't mind that. While I'm here with this clean brush, I want to lift out a little bit on the bottom of this iris and make that really light. That's lifting nicely. Just a little bit so that it's kind of got this glow at the bottom. Good practice for um, eyeballs is to paint drops of water because they imitate it as in it's a wet surface and it shows you how the light hits the top and bounces out the bottom there. Uh, that's a little better. You can see how you could just spend the whole time on that. I'm just going to correct the top now and move on because otherwise it'll be a bit boring for you to watch me continually sit here uh, correcting. The um, I'm going to correct that. So the um, that, that part of the iris, it, I'm looking at the image. Really important to look at the image the whole time. It comes up and then that darkness goes quite um, come, it's a little it flattens off and you can't see any of the yellow and that's what I need to block there so back to my flat brush dark brown and I'm going to be bold and flatten there it comes and it flattens and then it goes up into there and right I won't go on about the eyeball much more than that because, as I say, it's a bit boring for you to sit and listen to my tiny adjustments. What you need to be doing is having a look at yours, your image, your eyes, and spend um, as much time as you feel is worthwhile. The rest of it's going to be loose and it's going to be covered in such a small amount of time. Uh, in comparison to the amount of time we've spent um, doing this eye. Now, I want to make this ring here more prominent, this beautiful ring that actually, turns out, sits over the eye. So I'm going to get a little, get my larger brush. This is a size zero black gold 311. Wet it. And I'm going to, um, I might pick up some of the, um, well, it's kind of that beautiful brown. I know I want to I have this desire to warm it up. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that red, stick it in the yellow, and make an just a warmish orangey color. Flat brush. I'm going to wet this section liberally, wet, 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 but not too much because you'll just move the paint off. And I'm going to add a little bit of warmth oh reading is so brown and i'm trying really hard to follow the image the whole time and then into that drop in some yummy dark that's where i'll put the dark so i'm trying really hard to use my brush and move it in the direction of the uh, actual feathers and this way I've um, by putting the water down first and then a bit of color we're glazing and um, which allows for all that lovely soft edges I'm just going to do some wispy masks while I've got this softness um, while I've got the little bit of um, brown on my brush and oh it doesn't go like that see that's what happens if you take your eye off it it goes like that right really important put your eye on the image and see what it does I've barely got any paint on my brush adding the tiniest bit of subtle marks there and following the line it goes up up here and up here If this hasn't darkened sufficiently, it's so easy to come back in and darken again. Um, there's also these beautiful dark tufts here. So I'm going to see if I can get that done now. Lots of water on my brush, dark version. 
and it comes, there's the ring and then there's a highlight and then on the outside of the highlight we've got these beautiful tufts. Oh, well, they're feathers, aren't they? These are tufts. These are little feathers I'm doing now. And, um, and then skip a bit. So the whole time I'm trying really hard to, I'm going to go in for the light stuff, really hard to keep my eye on what the image actually does because it doesn't do what my brain thinks it does. I'm just adding little dark bits. Some of them do come from that ring out, some, but a lot of them are just sitting towards the outside. And that's, so those are too prominent. So I'm going to get some of this orangey mix and soften them. I wonder if that will work. It's reading as brown, but it was actually orange that I'm adding. I'm just going over the marks that are too prominent and incorporating them with a wetter mix. And that needs to be darkened there. That's lovely and dark. All right. Hopefully that's starting to look a little more convincing. We are going to get to the body and it's really going to be knocked over in a short amount of time. This is where the um, time needs to be spent is on the uh, those eyes and the face. I'm going to soften this side here. Um, in the image, you can see the edge, but it's the part of the uh, owl that is turning away from us, and I don't want it to be that um, hard edge. So go back to my flat brush, which is so often what I'm using at the end of a painting. Wet it, dirty water, clean water. I'm going to not dry it off too much because I want to scrub that edge. I want that to be soft. And this is really harsh on my lovely flat brush. This is why I go through lots of flat brushes, really, because you have to be harsh with them. Clean it off and then see if I can just, I just want to soften all of that up. Now I'm going to see if I can push it. I'm kind of cleaning up, but using the brush and pushing it in. I want to not be able to, to see that edge and if I'm lucky that will mean all the focus remains in on those um, eyes. So I've made a bit of a mess down here and I'm going to have to just run that colour down. It's not really what I wanted but kind of made my own mess there and let's just see if I can, yeah, there, now it's starting to move. Okay, I'm going to turn it around and see if that, um, ah, Natasha uh, said definitely need to be as brave as you to make things on mine a lot darker. Yep, and it's just simply a matter of uh, less water, more paint, less water. Um, so I've now added a bit of tone all the way down there that uh, means that I'm going to have to add that up there and I'm going to do it immediately so I can uh, match that tone. That's not what I had planned at all. I'm just while I'm here going to use this flat brush to finish. I planned on a, a, a white background, but <laughs> you got to roll with what happens um, in painting. And, oh, I'm going to scrub that a little bit more too. It's nice to do it while it's beautiful and wet. And then I'm just sort of cleaning up and pulling the line in. I can correct that when it's all um, later on, when it's all lovely and what's on this brush? I can correct that later on when it's all dry, but I'm going to leave it for now. Now, I'm going to use the slightly larger brush. This is my size zero and very quickly put colour to match this tone. I'm going to do it now while... Actually, oh, I'm, the dirty water is doing it. Huh, that's cool. It's got a little bit of warmth in it. It's a little bit different to this colour there. But 
then it's I'm not going to have stark white there and um, like a pale, pale tone there. Okay, and then grab a little bit of what I hope will look like this lovely, um, it's kind of like burnt umber. Just add a little bit of, there, that's it. Just wanted, it's kind of like adding dirty water to the background. I'm just doing it as fast as I can to match this softness here. Might go into the head and into the body. I don't really want a line. Right. Oh, that's better. I've made a bit of a mess on my board here. So I'm just going to mop so that I don't get any surprises of like something coming up and uh, some moisture coming in and doing a background and I'm just going to ever so gently dab it and then I don't have to watch it ever so gently with the tissue turn it over to a clean side bit of a variegated background that's it okay that's done oh we're so close to doing the body I'm going to do the beak and then we'll do the body and um the body's just going to be Pure creative fun when we get to that. So here's the, it's, I called it a beak again. It's a bill. Must remember the correct name. It's a bill. It's got these white feathers coming over it. You could get out some white gouache and paint them positively, but I'm going to attempt to paint them negatively. And that way I will keep the white of the paper. Um, so a really pale mix. I've already got that in the middle of my palette there, but it definitely has a warmish undertone. So I'm going to get my um, little liner brush, pick up a little bit of that red and add it to my pale mix in the middle and I have warmed it up. I don't know if you can tell that little swatch there. It's just got a pink undertone now. It's really lovely. And I'm gonna wet in here. I'm using this brush to wet. I'm just gonna double check, is it clean? Clean enough. And I'm going to wet the white section now. Wet, wet, wet. Comes in there and do some wispy marks. And then there's a wet section here. Wispy marks. And I'm now going to try really hard to stare at the direction. Oops, more water. Uh, or oh, there was no water there, that's what that was. Oh, just get rid of that. Right, back here. Here's where I put the water. It goes like so in and it goes like that over the top of the bill, calling it the right name now. It comes down here. I'm just going to wet that, that edge and that'll get soft. Wash it off because it's dark. And it comes a little bit more of this warmed up version. comes down here. Little wispy bits, wispy, wispy, and a bit more water to join it into there. Just doing a whole stack of little brush strokes and trying so hard to go in the direction that they actually go in. And they're just fascinating. There's, there's such a wonderful aspect to painting is that you start to realize really amazing things about nature or any of your, anything to do with your subject, really. Um, wispy, wispy, it's lots of water. And wispy bits down here. I'm down here at the bottom of the bill. Oh, I called it the right thing. Okay, I'm going to match up the other side while I'm here. Wispy, soft bits. Come into there. These bring, come out. So I'm going to see if I can move that edge, that hard edge. 
is actually full of soft bits, shoving, kind of agitating it with my um, little tiny brush and see if I can put in these little tiny feathers that go like in a kind of a circular direction. I've got no water there. I've just got this light toned paint and I'm following ever so delicately the direction and they stop about halfway up the eye and they kind of join in the middle there. It's dark in the centre, so I'll come back in and put some darks later if I, if it needs it. Um, just a little bit in there, and we can do the bill. Okay, I'm going to use the same little brush. Put on some water for a highlight on the bill, and I'll start with this warm tone of burnt sienna and see if I can paint around. Paint around those little white feathers, little tiny little tufty feathers. It comes down here. I feel like I haven't drawn the bill correctly, but I've looked at it a few times and can't work out what's wrong. Uh, it'd be the sort of thing that sometimes later on I go, ah, I can see what line went wrong there. Maybe it's just this round section. I'm hitting the water with my light tone, hitting, and if I do it all with a light tone, then I can come in with one of these darker mixes here, this is the browner darker mix, and add it to the wet mix and it'll move in, I hope. I think that's the beauty of watercolour is that there's a bit of experimentation every time, what will work, what won't. I'm just adding the slightest hint of colour to this right side and it's all wet in the centre, so it's just bleeding in just a tinsy, tinsy bit, a bit of dark there. And while I'm here and I've got this dark on my brush, I'll just go up the brow a little towards the center of the eyes. That's not the brow, is it? I can't remember. There's a name for what's between your eyes, that section. Just adding darks. I'm looking for where are the darks, trying really hard to keep my lovely white sectors free and in there. Okay, I've kept it light. That whole thing was a lovely light tone. Um, it might be something that it needs correcting later or it might just have worked sufficiently to not worry about it. Ooh, we're getting so close to the fun part where we just do the body. It's like a reward that you've done all this hard work and the concentration and then you get to the stage where you're like, ha, huh, the um, body. Ooh, are we there? Oh, possibly. Mm, goodness. I've got salt on hand. Table salt. I'm feeling like I need to add tiny little details to that eye. There's a little line that goes there. And there's a little dark bit that goes there and comes in a little. This is why I don't paint realistically because you go, oh, it needs that and it needs that and it needs that. But hopefully it's going to be satisfying at the end. Oh, I haven't done the highlights. I wanted to correct the highlights. The um, highlights when we painted them were I painted, negatively painted the highlights in the eyes way larger than they needed to be now. I'm going to get the um, flat brush and a bit of water and I'm going to just drag it across one of those highlights and knock it right back. 
Do the same on the other eye, just dragging a moist brush across the highlight. And that's knocking that highlight right back. And a little bit more, I might break up that highlight into two sectors. Ooh, that's good. I'm going to zoom in a little closer so you can see what I'm doing there. That'll help, won't it? Well, please always ask me to zoom in or out to um, improve your view. It's so interesting looking at the screen there. Thank you for all the thumbs up to all the people who've done that. I love that you've done that. That's wonderful. I'm just dealing with this highlight. I'm going to drag the brush through it just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit. And in the actual photo, those little highlights go into the yellow. So I'm going to see if I can get away with that. I'm going to grab this same flat brush. And I've cleaned it. I'm, oh, that's flat. I'm going to just change that. And see if I can lift off a little highlight that goes from the yellow to the black. And I'm going to go from yellow to black in that direction because I don't want to drag the black into the yellow. I just want to drag the yellow, remove the yellow and a little bit of black. Oh, that's better. I'm going to see if I can get away with that on the other side. Clean the brush and drag it from the yellow towards the black. There. There. That's cool. While I'm there, with this warm mix, this yellow and red, I'm going to be really, really bold now and create a shadow. I'm going to drag this flat brush across the eye because the brows the are quite prominent and I'm just going to be bold and do it. I've dragged a shadow across the eye. I might need to do it a little more. Oh, I do. I need to do it across there. And I'm going to match it up on the other side, turn my paper around and go there. Take that into there. That was a, such a subtle little shadow that I've been really keen to add. I'm just looking at my um, irises and whether or not they match and they don't. So... I probably need to adjust that one. But anyway, I shall stop adjusting and let's get on to the body. Otherwise, <laughs> I'll just spend all my time on that. Okay, I've got a bit of salt. I'll zoom out so you can see the body. I'll zoom out a little more. There, that's better. And... I mentioned that we're, we've got an imaginary light source. It's coming from this way. I want this to be lighter and this to be slightly darker. I'm talking really slight adjustments here. I want this to be lighter and this a little darker. And I loved with the salt um, samples how the salt grabbed the blue and pushed the burnt sienna away, and I'm hoping that that will happen down there. The other thing is that this table salt I'm going to be using like such a gentle sprinkle makes it easier to get off and also um, gives a, what I think is a better effect. Well, this is pretty cool. There is so um, just this little bit more of this body to do. And uh, as soon as I've done that, I want to also talk uh, before we finish up today about next week and some things to get organized for next week. Um, okay. What color do you want it? It's got generally a kind of more of a yellowy brown here and some dark, darker browns there. And um, I'm enjoying this little bit of warmth that I added to the mix with a, that little bit of red. So I think I'll use up this beautiful bit here. Okay, big brush, size two, quill, black gold, wet it. And I'm going to do the head first. So I'm going to put plenty of water on the side 
that's going to be lighter and kind of let the water run out as it hits this side. Or oh, I'm going to soften that as I'm here. Good opportunity to make that just all soften and move. There are no hard lines on the owl's head. Oh, and soften that as well up there. And that comes in here. Then I'm going to go straight into that lovely mix and put lots of, so I want it darker over there. And it is darker in there, darker there, and a little bit darker there. I'm putting the colour where it's kind of darker. And that's light, that's light, and a little bit more water and so that this tone is lighter. And just incorporate it, super subtle, lighter to darker. Grab the salt as fast as you can and a pinch. It is barely a pinch. Dump salt. Okay, body. <laughs> I told you the body would be really fast in comparison to the time spent on those eyes. Um, very similar method, except that this front piece, this like the chest, kind of goes from here down like that. Just running my hand down so I remember. This has got dark swatches through it of those darker feathers and this has got this beautiful stroke, stroke, stroke down. Okay, big brush for the water again and a lot of water. I'm going to put water over the whole thing. A big mop brush would have been awesome for this, but I'm using what is right next to me. Or a big hake would have been perfect to wet this whole area. Water, 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 water. I'm wetting the whole thing. I'm going to soften in on that line while I'm here. Soften the edge, soften this one. It's not great for my brushes, but it doesn't matter. Uh, soften here. These are all the edges that have dried from last week. Okay, a little more water because I took a little while to um, soften bits. So checking, put your head on the side and you can see whether or not it needs any more water, any bits you missed. And we're ready for the colour. So this is the um, chest. I'm going to put lovely wet marks and I'm going to be so fast because I want that salt to go on while it's in that beautiful state beautiful wet state I don't I'm not going to be too careful around the bill it comes down there and then over here is the darker side this has got darker strokes in it I'm kind of half ignoring the um what I was talking about with the tone and turning it into 3d because I want these beautiful oh I've gone into the blue mix I want it to be I'm approximating what these beautiful feathers do. Okay, a bit more down here. Feather, feather, feather look. And it's kind of lighter there, kind of darker there. Oh, I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna there in where those beautiful feathers meet. The um, side, I guess it's it's probably its wing, and then it goes around like that. Oh, burnt sienna. Burnt sienna. Oh, I'm going to put in some darker bits. Oh, okay. Stop. I have to stop. And salt, pinch, and sprinkle. Um, sprinkle lightly. I'm sprinkling so it goes absolutely everywhere and not clumping. Clumping um, salt's really hard to get off. I am just sprinkling and waving my hand around so that it goes mm, I could even add a little more over there I'm just 
got tiny little pinches that I'm adding. So at this point, if you're thinking it's not dark enough, it's not light enough, it's not the time to do it. Yes, wasn't it quick? Oh, it's like it has a star. It is too. I might correct that later on. That was me um, lifting and going over the existing um, uh, highlight. Might look good, might not, doesn't matter. At this stage, I am not going to add much more to it at all. I'm able, going to take a second to kind of think, oh, how's it going? Um, this needs to be redefined a little more. This dark's not bad. I'm pretty pleased with that. The eyes need a slight adjustment, but I'm not going to, um, I'm, I just don't want to obsess over it. I, I'm at the point where I start to think, oh, I'd like to move on to something else. Or maybe I'm not. Now I'm like, oh, crumbs, look, it goes there. Oh, okay, I can't resist adding in little bits. It really comes in like that and round. Yeah, well, where do you stop? Where do you draw the line? And the body is, is done in a heartbeat. I definitely want to get my flat brush and see if I can re-establish. Oh, that's very wet all over my board. I'm going to just clean that up because I don't want any of that to surprise me by creeping up on me. I don't, um, I usually tape things down like this, but it's actually turned out to be quite good while I'm in this confined space. Uh, turning the whole board around would actually be quite difficult. So I want to, with my flat brush, I'm just going to clean it again, see if I can clean this part of the eye. Put it over there. It's been really bothering me about those irises not matching. If I can lift some of that black, they might be closer in. Um, size, oh, I have to finish my sentence. <laughs> right, okay. This is drawing my eye away from the um, the owl's eyes. But sometimes at this point in the painting, I'm drawn there because I've just painted it. Whereas I've painted the owl, owl's eyes last week. So I'm, oh, I don't know. Oh, it's such a hard um, place in the painting to be. Is it done? Am I... Do I need to get some white gouache out? I think I do. I need to, oh, okay, I'm going to go to the flat brush again. I'm going to lift off some of these, some of that black, see if I can make little feathery things go into there, just to soften that black bit. That's a bit better. It's kind of <laughs> ah. Is it done? I don't know. Okay, it's eleven a.m. I think that's a good moment to think. Okay, um, let's just let it settle for a minute while I talk about next week. Um, butterflies. So I've set up a live stream schedule for next Thursday, 10 a.m., same time, same bat channel. And uh, the subject is going to be butterflies. And I wanted to talk about what we're going to be using for the butterflies to draw them. 
in this owl, we drew straight onto the watercolour page and um, discussed briefly the issues with that, such as when you make a mistake, can you get it off? This is rough paper. And uh, so that's a little bit awkward sometimes for removing. And if you've pressed a little hard, you get those sort of issues. I'm gonna just going to put this up here so you can still see it. Just clean this a little bit because I'm about to show you a book that I absolutely love. And um, Karen's going to recognize it in a second. So I've got a couple of things here to show you for next week. So I'm going to have to move the owl right up there, I'm afraid. So you can see this book. It's called Drawing Made Easy with Selections from Practical Drawing, e.g. Lutz. This book was first published 100 years ago. I've just done a review, actually, and I'll release the video shortly. <laughs> and Karen goes, aha, yes. So, And um, Karen bought this for me because um, I was – I'm just going to flick through it so you can have a little look while I'm talking about it. I was using things, pages from this book – uh, that I'd found on Pinterest. So people will take photographs of staff and post it to Pinterest, of course, as they do. And I was using them and Karen found the book, found that it had been reprinted in 2009 or something and um, uh, get, ordered me a copy. So you can order a copy. Um, maybe Karen could put a link if anyone asks and they want to order this book. I love this book. I love it for teaching and I love it for drawing things. It's brilliant for the beginner drawer, for anyone who's interested in how to break down any subject into a smaller shape. And then at the back, it's got a section for advanced drawing. So that's why it's a two-part thing. Drawing Made Easy, that's the first half where he breaks down a um, whole range of subjects, like the, the from a teepee to a butterfly, it's pretty cool. And the back is uh, for advanced drawing and um, lots about figure drawing and um, faces. Uh, so E.G. Lutz does both. This is a gorgeous little example of how you break the shape down and put the detail last. Big shapes before small shapes, such an excellent concept for drawing. So it has a section on butterflies. And so what we're going to do is draw the butterflies. Oh, Karen says, I Googled the name of the book and you can find a link from that. Fantastic. Thank you, Karen. Um, we're going to draw a range of butterflies. And if you, um, uh, you could get the book, you go to go to Pinterest. If you don't want to order the book, I will post, a, a, I probably should put a link to one of these images. Um, Sorry, just thinking that through as <laughs> so I'm talking here. Anyway, I'll solve that issue later on, maybe on my Facebook page. Uh, or you just turn up and, and I'll show you how to do it. There's these butterflies from an X, curvy X. There's a butterfly from the straight X. There's the butterfly from the letter Y. And then there's butterfly from letter Y, letter Y. Letter. And so you can, draw, using this method, draw a butterfly going that way, a butterfly going that way, a butterfly with flat wings, um, when I first began to draw, all I ever did was draw butterflies with flat wings. Uh, and this book helped me go, oh, what a simple way to um, change the way that you think about drawing. So as I mentioned briefly, we drew straight onto the paper. This time I'm thinking we draw on a piece of paper, get our design right on another piece of paper, and then transfer the drawing. So that's what we're going to do. So what you'll need I will take you through the steps of the butterfly. So you don't have to have the book. It's really straightforward. If you like this transfer method, you need either. This is bank layout pad. I got this from Riot. I um, bought it actually because um, they have half, had half price everything sales for ages. And so I bought it and used some of it. And it's like a cheap version of tracing paper. Tracing paper, um, Riot have tracing paper as well, but um, bank layout paper is like the cheap version. I'm just going to show you what it looks like. just looks like really thin. I'm just lifting up a sheet. Really thin paper. And it's not, um, I suppose you could say it's translucent not transparent. Tracing paper, transparent. This stuff is translucent, but like it's a third of the price of 
tracing paper. And um, I'm going to put the design onto that, finalise the design, and then transfer it to our watercolour paper. So what you'll need, if you like that, is either a piece of tracing paper or bank layout paper. I'll put a link to this to Raya if in case you want to buy it because it's an affiliate link. So I get a few cents from, um, and I mean that literally, <laughs> a few cents if you buy it via my affiliate link. It's a little way you can help me out. Um, and then you'll need a, a pastel, a pastel crayon, the soft type, the chalky type. And we'll draw the image on here and put a little bit of pastel on the back and I'll show you how to transfer it onto the watercolour paper. And then there's no um, erasing on the watercolour paper. It gets around that image of making mistakes on the watercolour paper. That is for next week. You may want to ignore the image that I put. I just went and found a, a butterfly painting that I'd done in the past um, to put up on the link for next week's live stream. But it, the painting that we do won't look anything like that. So apologies for that because I haven't painted it yet. We haven't painted it together yet. So we don't know what it's going to look like. Um are there any questions, any comments, any thoughts? Um, there was a really good, you all had a good reaction to painting the butterfly as a subject, so that's kind of cool. And maybe next week we'll come up with a, um, oh, no, we should forward plan now on for subjects for the following week because then next week I can talk about it. Um, and just while, uh, hey, thanks, Natasha. Just while I'm waiting to see if you've got any comments or suggestions, loving the look of the body as, oh, yeah, that salt is doing awesome things. If you don't love what your salt does, it's actually really easy to get rid of, particularly where there's a light tone, take the salt off and paint over it. Don't worry at all. Um, my owl's head is looking a little more speckled than I like. I'm not sure that she, I'm going to call her a she, uh, I'm not sure that she, that it's looking feathery, but the body, I'm really happy with the subtleness of the body and what's happening there. Oh, thank you, Linda. That's wonderful. Um, one of the things that I was thinking about for um, forward planning here next week about a fly the following week because believe it or not lockdown is going to continue I can't believe it but it's true but what we could look at is a way to mount the watercolors so we've been all sitting at home painting lovely watercolors what are you going to do with them all and you can take them to the framer and you can pay a couple of hundred dollars make them look fantastic uh, we can look at lots of framing options uh, it's the sort of thing that works really well as a discussion, as a matter of fact, because everyone has lots of ideas about how to do that. But what I've been experimenting with, and I'm just going to grab this, is a riot. So lots of ordering. Marion's been doing lots of ordering from riot. I've been um, ordering these. Oh, you do, Natasha. That's excellent. I've been ordering these canvases and mounting my watercolour onto canvases and I've been Googling it and watching YouTube uh, um, experimentation on it and um, I kind of would love to show you uh, the best of everything that I've found and this abstract landscape that I painted on a full sheet and then I mounted it on a canvas. It does require a um, staple gun. So that I'm, I use a staple gun to do it. So if that's going to be an issue, oh, that's tricksy. Uh, you could probably use little nail tacks. Anyway, what I did was glue it down and stretch it onto the back and put all sides of the painting onto the back of it. And, oh, my gosh, the edges have um, a part of the watercolour painting. It is so beautiful. I am absolutely stoked with how beautiful uh, it looked for the 
um, stretching. So I didn't plan for that, and it's about a minute away. Yeah, thumbtacks would be the other way to do it. Do you guys want to hang about and give me one minute while I go and get it? Because then we can, I can get your feedback on whether or not you'd like to know that method. Because if you'd like a simpler method, there's lots of ways in which we can mount watercolour um pages it's just that this would give you two weeks in oh natasha says yes okay chat amongst yourselves for a moment i will be back in i reckon 30 seconds Oh, yeah, Natasha, good point about the owls. If you could post them into onto my Facebook page or um, um, tag me somehow. Oh, I don't know. I'm so um, I'm so limited in social media. Uh, this is an abstract landscape that I did. I'm just going to zoom out so you can see the whole thing here. There, right. Now... This was painted. I'll just put it in screen. Uh, yeah, Natasha, that'd be great if you tag me and then I can go in and like it and, and uh, give you feedback if you ask for feedback. Make sure you don't ask for feedback if you're not after feedback. That was one of my very early learning lessons as a teacher is um, not everyone's after feedback. <laughs> Lots of people are like, I like it and I don't need to change it. So um, don't ask for feedback if you don't want to change it. Um, please, because <laughs> I hate offending people. I only want to encourage you. Uh, so this is, I'm going to turn it over so you can see the back. And as I turn it, what's beautiful about this method are the sides. I'm so excited about the sides. So here it is on the back. It was a full sheet of watercolour paper and the reason why I was talking about, I'm just going to rest it on my arm. The reason why I was talking about the um, staple gun is I've stapled it there, 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 all, all the way around. Uh, if any of you are familiar with stretching your own canvas, what you're doing is stretching a piece of paper, a painting over um, an existing canvas. This is a deep edge canvas. Again, it's from Riot. <laughs> uh, Yes, Riot have been marketing at me brilliantly and I've been like, oh, cool, I should have one of those. Um, this method I used, Mod Podge, and I'd really love to show it to you, but you would all need to have a canvas or a board or um, – and, and if you had a canvas that you've painted on and you um, – just want to reuse it, you can put the paper over it. That's actually what I did, believe it or not. I'll turn it back over. It's an abstract landscape. You can't tell, but there was a whole painting underneath. This it was a pretty horrible. Um, but I kept hanging on to this canvas because I thought, ooh, can I do something? I tried to fix it, fix it, fix it, and I, I couldn't. So eventually I thought, oh, what a perfect opportunity. A painting I didn't overly love and a, I'm talking about this watercolour painting and underneath on the a canvas and the substrate a painting that I also didn't love so excellent opportunity great to use up something that you're not attached to because it's a little bit risky um, playing with your watercolour paper like this practice on one you don't like so how are we all feeling about that you would all need to have a canvas because um, if that's just, you know, not really appealing to everyone, then um, we could just have a discussion about it and instead on the following week and maybe maybe you just keep painting. Maybe that's more fun. Maybe this is something you can Google yourself. Any thoughts? I'm going to turn it around while I'm waiting for you to comment. Thank you, Karen. Look at the edges. They are so beautiful. Oh, and I spent a while folding in a particular way 
Look at the edges. I think it's the edges that I um lovely. I've, there you go. Paint. Okay. Uh, then in that case, I will come up with a subject matter for the following week. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for all the likes. It really just makes an enormous difference. It just, it just makes me excited and makes me want to keep painting and teaching and, and coming up with ideas that are um, um, appeal to lots of people but are achievable at the same time. And, and I'm totally about stuff that you want to do, stuff that you uh, like. I'm going to put my owl back in... Um, yeah, he's not too bad. Oh, I called him a he. <laughs> I think when I liked her, she was a she. And now that I'm like, oh, I don't know. Anyway, I will think what I will do. Um, Alison says, I'd like to see that. You'd like to, I'm not quite sure what you're referring to, Alison. You'd like to see the something. <laughs> Um, yeah, so thank you so much for liking and um, subscribing. Yeah, maybe we can do both. Mounting, yeah, okay. I Then what I will do is a bit of both. We'll do another painting and then I'll um, talk about just, I, I'll just talk through the process of the mounting. That that will solve that then. That's what I'll do because I do have lots of other ideas about mounting them, having painted in watercolour and um, I, I get to the point of uh, I get completely sick of paying for framing, particularly if I am exhibiting, then I end up bringing the paintings home and I've spent all that money and then it kills me to have to bring them home again. Um, having said that, I don't mean to suggest that I haven't had lots of success. I have. But um, when you've paid out all that money for framing, it kills more versus just paying for a canvas. Like the canvas cost me like $10. And then I've only spent um, $10 in about half an hour of my time. Uh, right. So next week is butterflies. You will need either a piece of bank layout paper or tracing paper. Uh, I'll show you how to draw the butterflies. And... Um, Sylvania Shire has put Sylvania Shire. I was thinking Sylvania Shire is the is someone was writing it, but that's someone's name. Sylvania Shire flowers. Ooh, cool. Very true. And people probably want to want to frame for their own home styling too. That's exactly right. Um, selling art uh, unframed, it doesn't look as good, so it's harder to sell it. But in fact, people often want their own framing as well. So yeah, framing it for sale is it's a whole um, interesting um, board game. Felix's mum, how are you? That's lovely that you've joined in. That's wonderful. Hi, Felix. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, and Felix and his dad are watercolour painters. Oh, no, Felix's dad was an oil painter, I think. They're just around the corner from me. That's really cool that you've um, you've joined in. That's wonderful. Hey, Felix, I hope you've been really well in lockdown. Thank you so much, guys. I will see you next week, same time, same bat channel. Bye. <laughs>